minutes. Just a heads up on that. Okay, we'll go right into your questions for Coach McCaffrey. Fran, to win a game like this, it takes an incredible toughness against a really good team. How do you think your team res responded to every single challenge it faced to this day? Well, yeah, yeah, you're right, Scott. I mean, they're really good. Uh, and they're a tough team. They've been playing extremely well. They played well on the road. Uh, we threw a couple punches at them, and they responded. Uh, but I thought, you know, in the middle part of the second half, I thought defensively we were not where we needed to be. And uh, pointed that out during a timeout. And I thought we were substantially better after that. Because coming down a stretch to beat a team of this caliber, you've got to execute. And execution is at both ends of the floor. Everybody thinks execution is offense only. But you got to execute on defense. They've got drivers, they've got post guys, they've got shooters. So our defense coming down a stretch really, I think, provided us uh, with great opportunity and great energy. The crowd was terrific. And then coming down a stretch, we executed on offense. Even when we missed, we got a pretty good look. It looks like defense is, in your home games against these really good teams have been what have propelled you at the end, You know, whether it was Michigan holding the door. You know, down the stretch, this one seemed to be the same way. Um, it was. I mean, you're, you're talking about a team that's got a lot of weapons. I mean, there's a lot of ways they can go. Uh, I mean, Io and you know, Kofi get a lot of the publicity, and they should. You know, but Georgie's very good. I mean, Feliz, I mean, he, he's really good attacking the basket. He made some shots tonight. He scores anyway, but, you know, Frazier's a guy that can get 20. They got a lot of different guys that can get 20. Griffin comes off the bench, hits two three, that's what he does. Uh, Nichols has always played well against us, played well tonight. They got a really good team. Luca took nine threes tonight. Was this something that was just there and you wanted to exploit it, or was it uh, something that progressed as the game went along? You know what, Mike? I mean, he can shoot 18 if he wants, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. He went scoreless for about 15 minutes. Is there, was there something that kind of got him going? Yeah, I thought we, we probably did a better job of getting it to him. You know, and he, you know, we can't have him go that long without getting touches. you got to give him touches. I know it's a combination of maybe we were a little free happy, but also give credit to them. I mean, they have a scouting report, too. They were sitting in there on top of them. You know, the ball's on one side. They were sitting in the lane and willing to give up some opportunities, and we took some threes, didn't make them. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they were making, they made a decision to, to limit his touches there. And Coach Underwood talked about, raved about your job that you're doing with your team this year. What have you seen from him last year? Two blowout losses sort of to you guys, and they seem to be playing better. What do you see from their program and, and what he's done with this team? Well, I, I think he's built it uh, piece by piece. You know, he's, he's put together a really good roster. Um, I think, you know, they played differently defensively last year. That was something that he was kind of committed to and tried. And, uh, you know, I think any time a coach makes changes that have been as effective as this one, I think you have to credit that guy uh, for how smart he was. To Okay, I've been in the league now. I've got it figured out. I've got a team that I like, and this is this is how we need to play now. Maybe that's how we needed to play before. This is how we got to play now. So I give the guy a lot of credit uh, because they are tough. They are really good, and uh, you know one of the better teams that have performed well on the road, maybe in the country. You see similarities between you two guys. I know you're you're built a little bit different, but it seems like both teams just kept coming at each other. Yeah, and and. and you know, they probably expected it from us. We certainly expected it from them. Uh, every time there's a little separation, the other team came back. It says a lot about the character of both teams. It seems like the longer the season goes, the more apparent it is that you've got a lot of guys with a hard competitive edge. Is that something that you can bring out in them, or do they simply have to have that themselves? I think that's a great question. Uh, I think you can, you can help it a little bit, but I think that's either in you or it's not. Because, like I said, you know, competing is there's a physical side of the physicality of the game and the stamina required to play in a game that's up and down, that's this intense. While at the same time, processing a scouting report that's very intricate. And at the same time, 
being able to execute the offense and whatever your job description is. Because you can get sideways when the game gets a little sticky and make mistakes. You've got to be able to execute under pressure, under duress, you know, without getting involved in the trappings of the game, the physicality of the game, the quality of your opponent. Uh, you have to continue to fight through and respect your opponent, remember what the game plan is, and execute that to the best of your ability. Calm down, get a good shot. Get to the offensive glass. You miss, run back. Okay, don't give them an easy tran transition basket because you're jogging back. Get back, get underneath the ball. Wall them off and then make them shoot a contested shot and miss and then go rebound the ball and then do it again and again and again and again without you know, committing a lot of mistakes or if you do commit a mistake, make that become two, three, four because you didn't have the mental toughness necessary to get back and straighten it out. Frank, can you tell when you're recruiting somebody if they have those characteristics? Yeah, pretty much, Pat. I mean, uh, you've been to enough high school games. I mean, if you if you have an opportunity to watch somebody enough, it's pretty easy. Sometimes in a recruiting process, especially when you're recruiting from far away, you don't you can't see the guy <coughs> multiple times, and you might miss. Uh, but if you took him, if you offered him a scholarship, you obviously saw something you liked. But I think if you if you can watch people in competitive situations under duress and see how they respond. And you can do that both at the high school level or the AAU level because they're in high level games. Um, you can pretty much see it. I think anybody in this room could, could see it if we went and watched a guy play five or six times. Okay, Take two more see, questions. Uh, it was a pretty physical game. Um, what did you see there at the end before the handshakes? The it's, just, you know, it's the same thing all the time. Line. Every one of those situations comes down to, you know, there's two seconds to go. You know, why we just the game's over, you know. But you know they played till the end. They can't fault them for that. They played till the end. Uh, then there's pushing and shoving because you know the guy gets chopped. There's no reason we can chop there. And, you, and then you just go to the locker room. It's unfortunate, but uh, you know nothing major happened. It's kind of a non-story as far as I'm concerned. Kind of struggled recently shooting. For him to come in and not just make three. Three pointers, but a really crucial one late in the game. What's that say about his just mental toughness and, and confidence? Maybe? Well, you know, he's had some good games. He's had some games where he hasn't shot it as well. Uh, but I mean, his his value, uh, I think, is you know so intricate. If you really study the game, but he started at the four spot, played the two spot, played the three spot, finished the game running the point, had seven assists, no turns. We talk about execution coming down to stretch. He's executing all of our play sets, all of our counters, and making all the right reads. At the same time, he's fighting a high ball screen where he started the game playing at the back of the zone, having to come up and play the high post and wrestle with a 6'11 guy. We thought they might try to post him up early. He tried to post up Connor. He couldn't move him. So if he's making threes, that's great. But if he's not making threes, he's a winner, and he's still going to help you win games. With his, with his mind and his toughness, and he knows we got three guys that can really score the ball. But he knows where they want it, and he's going to get it to them. You know, this league, you've been in this league 10 years. It's, it's always been good, at home and away. But this year it seems to, to be deeper than maybe it ever has been, and everybody's playing in a high level. What's kind of your assessment of the Big Ten now? Well, I think what you just said. Everybody's good. Everybody's deep. Every game is going to be just like this one, whether you win or lose. I mean, we lost the other night. It was the same way. Unbelievable atmosphere. You got guys in foul trouble. Other guys are stepping up, and, and you got to play. And we made a couple runs. Didn't win. Okay, go back to work. You got another team coming in here who's in first place. Okay, all right, we're fortunate enough to beat them. All right, well, now we got Purdue coming in. They went on essentially a game winner. The same team that won by 29 against Michigan State. So every game is exactly like this one, and that's what you've got to be ready for. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Coach. You. Thanks, Frank.